Hi, I can see it. All right. Welcome to this massive audience. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're on chapter eight, bootstrapping and confidence intervals. Um, and this is a really exciting chapter. We've been setting the table to dive into this, um, where we were talking about sampling in general, taking um, a limited number of observations um, from a population of interest. And then the, the big idea that they gave us was that you could do that process over and over again, um, building up effectively a stack of samples from which you then could take a um, sample statistic and the overall average sample statistic would be your point estimate, the standard deviation times uh, 1.96 standard deviations would be your, and plus or minus that from the point estimate would be your confidence interval. Um, so that was like the big idea. And so we're gonna dive deeper into that. They left us with the, um, the statement that you will never take multiple samples. Um, so it's great in concept. I think it sets the table, but um, it, it's not something you will do in practice unless you have the population readily available. Um, but if you do, then you can take a census, which is when you're, you're taking a um, population parameter, um, not a sample statistic. So the outline for today is going to be um, the pennies activity, uh, computer simulation of recent. So pennies activity is going to be like an example that they use. It's a nice analogy. Um, for insight into this process, we're going to do a computer simulation of resampling, or at least explain how that would work. And we're going to look at understanding confidence intervals, constructing confidence intervals, and interpreting confidence intervals. And it's in those later sections that they introduce um, infer, which is a package in tidy models, the tidy models ecosystem, um, specifically designed to making um, inference into population parameters accessible um, and easy. Well, I don't know if it's easy, but it's accessible, right? It's a set of tools specifically designed to make um, inference into population parameters. Okay, so the pennies activity, um, the, some of the big ideas from this section, right? So the, what is bootstrap resampling with replacement? Like this, this idea of um, uh, bootstrap resampling with replacement what is it yeah so that's like when you let's say you have a sample of like 30 uh 30 things like when you when you do a bootstrap resampling you draw from that sample of 30 things like something and then you put it back in before you draw like a second time or you know and so on and so um you're going to wind up with a different distribution of like whatever the um, sample statistic is uh, or whatever the yeah whatever whatever it is the thing that you're looking at in the sample because you've kind of you've replaced you put the thing back in and so like there's an opportunity to to grab it out again or to get something else right that's exactly right yeah so you end up with some duplication of observations um, but you get the same number of observations at the end. Right, right. Um, and then another big idea that they have is um, connecting this as an approximation of something. Uh, it's an approximation of the um, the sampling distribution. Yeah, exactly. Right, so they got that activity where you're taking multiple samples from the population. And whether they, they said it's not really feasible to do that in practice. So bootstrapping, and it's, it's interesting how that really works, but bootstrapping, that technique allows you to um, kind of approximate that process. Um, so you'll get um, a similar, it's, it's with the similar intent, the same uh, mindset, the same kind of men mental approach. Um, so it's, it's a cool tool, very empowering tool. Um, so yeah, so it's an approximation of the sampling distribution. Uh, so computer simulation of resampling. So they went, they went through kind of the tactile way of doing it where, kind of like how you described it, 
they had uh, the pennies they used uh, they wrote down the years on the pennies and and they took one took a name put it back wrote it down took a name put it back and they built out a, a set of observations in the same size but obviously allowing duplications and so that was the tactile um, way of doing it. and that, and then there's a computer simulation um, approach uh, so how do we do this in R now to show the um, example here so this is the example they actually had from the book they use um, this function rep sample in so rep sample and then these are just a few of the arguments you can pass in um, it's interesting that size is an argument so it doesn't just count the number of rows in the um, data frame. Um, so you can um, take more than there are rows in your data frame. You can take less. Um, and you can decide if you want to replace or if you don't. But replace, doing it with replacement and taking the same size observations out of the data frame as exists in the data frame, that is bootstrap. So you can, this is kind of a broader, a broader purpose tool but when you keep yourself to the same number of rows and replace and you replace every observation um, that you're sampling, then that is bootstrapping. Yeah. And the other way, there's other tools, like there's a bootstrap function in Model R, which is one of Hadley Wickham's packages. And that gives you like a nested data frame that has a resample object. So then you have to convert it to a uh, data frame and then you can work with it in the same way, but this is um, probably the, the easiest way to approach it. So what does this do? I think I just said what it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did kind of just, um, I was getting ahead of myself. So yeah, so this, oh, but the cool thing is, is so this gives you a, um, yeah, bootstrap sample from your sample data frame, and it has a, um, uh, column with the uh, replicate number so you'll have it'll have one for the number of rows in the first uh, bootstrap sample two for the second bootstrap sample three and so on and this allows you to effectively use append each of those samples on top of each other so you get this ginormous um, data set to work with and if you group on the um, replicate number that column and summarize, then you've effectively taken a bootstrap sample um, statistic. And you can use a cross and you can do all kinds of things from there, but it gives you that expanded um, appended data frame. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's doing. So how do you calculate bootstrap statistics from that, that output? uh that one let's see there's oh yeah i don't remember the name of the function for doing this um yeah i don't i don't know that i don't know Fresh no my problem. so yeah so the, i kind of said it i kind of um, gave it away so we haven't moved into the yeah you're right you're thinking of the i think the infer um, package yeah yeah they give us right like the the different um, steps we have and we'll go through that one but in general like if you were to just use this resample in and and you in this virtual sample um, data frame is going to be those appended data frames that are bootstrapped from uh, so penny sample once you've run then resample in size 50 replace and you're going to have um, well actually in this case you just have one um, but if you did say yeah so, I guess you could do a group by and like yeah yeah Group by the same Yeah. 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 That's exactly it. You just group by it. Group by that replicate col column and you summarize. Mm. Uh, so I, I realized bootstrap statistic may not be a thing. And I thought that was funny. I get in the <laughs> sometimes when I'm writing this. Um, so I may have made that up. I don't know. Someone that's a statistician could tell us. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe the name's weird, but like we both know what we're talking about here. Like, so. yeah. Because uh, it kind of, if it's approximating a sample statistic and the sample distribution, then I was thinking, okay, bootstrap. Um, that seems reasonable enough to me. Yeah, right? So I thought that was funny. I don't know if that's a thing. 
So what's the difference between a point estimate and a confidence interval? Yeah, so I think like here's where they start using a metaphor about like nets and spears. Um, and basically your your point estimate is, you know, it's it's um it's basically your okay, let me just go back to the metaphor. It's like easier to talk about that. So spears and, and nets are both ways of catching fish. So with a spear, like there's kind of like one spot that you're aiming for to get the fish or whatever. Um, and I guess in this case, in the metaphor, the, uh, the population statistic is the fish, like you, you know, um, and then your confidence interval is your net. So that's like, you're, you know, there's, you're, you you're have kind of a broader way of, of capturing the fish or population statistic um, by kind of casting this net out there. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of a bumbling explanation, but that's what I got for now. Yeah, I think that that sums up the analogy perfectly. Um, let's see, did I say anything different? I did not. So yeah, so the um, that's that's exactly what the analogy is saying, and it works really well. Oh yeah, so one one thing I thought was interesting. So the percentile method kind of makes sense to me because I'm reading. Um, another book by John Tukey where he talks about fences and he's like if you have your median and you have your 25th and your 75th percentile that's like you're in a quartile range and for these box plots right so they put up those fences and then you take like one and a half times that to get like your outer fence and then another one and a half times that to get like your outer outer fence and that's like the formula for identifying outliers well for these confidence intervals you take your point estimate which is a, which is the average so once you've grouped by all your replicates and you've taken the average you're going to get a um, table that has as many number of bootstrap samples as you took with the averages of each of each of those samples right um, and then you take the average of that and that's now your point estimate which is like you said it's it's uh it's trying to nail down what the population parameter is but then if you take the um if say you're interested in um, catching at 95% of the time, that's that's like your rate of capturing that that fish in your net. So you want to that net, you want to see how big that net is. Then you just take the um, value at the 2.5 percentile and the value at the 97.5 percentile. Mm -hmm. That range of values from your list of um, averages of whatever, um, well, whatever metric you ran you could run the proportion you could have summarized um, in, in any number of ways but you're basically taking the value at the uh, 2.5 percentile and at the 97.5 percentile and that then is your uh, 95 percent confidence interval so you can i think that's i just like that i, I just found that pretty intuitive and then there's there's additional ways to calculate that and the um, standard error is kind of the more traditional route. And that's where you take your standard deviation of that range of values. So your point estimates, the summary down to the average, then the next, you can also summarize it and get the standard deviation. And that standard deviation times 1.96 is plus or minus is now your 95% um, confidence interval. And then the third approach is like a um, theoretical mathy one before they could use computers, they, they came up with a theoretical approach that, that really gets at it pretty nicely. Um, yeah, so that is just what you said as well. All right, so constructing these bad boys. Um, Infer gives us uh, a bunch of tools to, to do this. The um, infer package gives us those tools. And we talked about, we kind of referred to the infer package earlier. Um, and so these are like the, the different steps. Are, are, um, I think they're, they're trying to create a mental model similar to how like Hadley Wickham does. He creates mental models for 
for his different packages. And so their um, mental model is you specify a response, then you generate the, repl the replications, you calculate your stat, and then you visualize. Um, and that's the, th and so specify, generate, calculate, visualize is their, um, their mental model, and those are each different um, functions that infer offers. And for um, specify, it uses the formula. So you, your a response is an outcome, is a, a dependent variable, it's a whatever, right? There's all these different ways of referring to it. Um, but you effectively, if you like in their example with um, beads, we're interested in the proportion of beads. So that would be the response. Actually, now that I'm saying it, I don't, I don't remember how they set that up. Um, but how does infer allow us to calculate confidence intervals? I think we can do both methods, the percentile method and the standard error method. Exactly. Yeah, so they, they have two um, functions available. So once you've um, specified a response, you've generated your reps and you've calculated a stat, save that in a um, object. And then with that, pull that object into your uh, either get confidence interval. Well, yeah, it's the same function, get confidence interval. Pull that into the get confidence interval and define the parameters to, to determine which type of confidence interval you want. So um, level equals 0.95, that's specifying that you, you want to catch the, um, that you, wanna, you want the rate of catching the population parameter of interest in your net 95% of the time. And then the type is percentile. And then for get confidence interval, um, you specify your type as SE, and then you would have saved your um, average somewhere else, you'd save your, um, your, uh, your response, the calculated stat in another object and, and pass that in for your point estimate. And it's always gonna be that 95% um, percent confidence interval in that case. And we, I don't focus too much on, I didn't, I don't think they do either, but, um, infer is going to become a bigger part of the workflow especially in the next chapter because we're going to get into like hypothesis testing and and infer has a lot of utilities that make um i mean you can already see the utilities here um simplify things and then and, and abstracts a lot of this complexity out but in the next chapter we'll go even deeper into um, using infer so interpreting confidence intervals so what is the confidence interval telling us? Yeah, this was like, I found this confusing and I actually had to talk to Dave, to, to Dave Robinson about this. Um, so they, they, they made it a point to like, uh, say that they wanted to make a distinction between like, oh, this isn't saying that like, there's a 95% chance that like you've got the right, um, you know, that the, that the, the population statistic is within the confidence interval. Um, like they, they kind of, they, they, they didn't like that language. Um, and instead they preferred us to say something like, you know, the confidence interval is constructed with a procedure that is like accurate 95% of the time or something like that. Um, the nuance there, like, I read it. I talked to Dave about it, and like, basically, he says like this goes to like a kind of a deep um, disagreement between like frequentists and Bayesians, and like how they like to interpret statistical results. And um, yeah, so I I didn't like. I found it kind of confusing, and I you know I it's on my list to look at some of the uh, some of the the Bayesian stuff um, so that I can better understand what's going on here but but yeah that's yeah i'm with you on that apparently there is like because they were pretty specific about the distinction um and and my takeaway the way i internalized it was um 
this is like a long run capture rate, like using the net analogy, like your net's gonna capture um, the population parameter 95% of the time. So what's the difference between that and a probability that the population parameters in your net? Like, I don't know, I, but apparently it's a big deal. Like you said. Yeah. The, the way that, the way that Dave explained it to me is like, <laughs> cause it's, it's, it's very strange. He basically said like, what's the probability that like, he said, I, I flipped a coin and he's like, what's the probability that it's heads? I said 50%. He's like, no, no, no. Like either it's either heads or it's not like there's no 50%. Like, what do you mean? And like, that was like, and I'm like, I don't know. Seems weird. Like, and he's like, he's like, that's how like the frequentists don't want to say that the probability of a flipping a coins uh, being heads is 50%. Cause I don't know. It's, it's a strange, it's a strange. Yeah. Thing. I don't, yeah, it is strange. I don't even know that it's semantics either. I think there is like a deeper mathematical thing going on there because i because even like the yeah. bayesian people that that are um all about probabilities like they their criticism of frequentist approaches um this being one of them is that it's not probability you can't you're not getting at the probability of the population parameter being correctly estimated you're getting at um something else um, yeah i i think it's a little it just seems like it's a little inside baseball. Like the, the, yeah, the this, it might be the, this like comment. I like, I thought this was a great book, but this was like the, the, this is the only part that I was kind of like, when I, when Dave explained this to me, I was like, I wish that this was not in the book because it's just, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of inscrutable. Like I, I, I don't think a lot of people would understand it. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, my, so what I, I said here that the rate the population parameter falls in the range is determined by the um, percentage of bootstrap values that fall in the confidence interval. So you set the confidence level. The confidence level is the uh, the rate that the population parameter could be expected to fall in your range. But how is that not a probability? I think there might be uh, something deeper there that. Yeah, it's definitely, it's deep and like, it's, yeah, I think it's really interesting, um, but it, it, it's just not like, mm, I, I, they didn't, they didn't go deep enough. Like it was kind of like, there's just this wrinkle here, you know, and you're like, what is going on? Um, yeah, there's probably an insight to be taken eventually. We'll be like, oh yeah, Matt, Eric, this insight, we got it. Uh -huh. <laughs> So what impacts the width of the confidence interval? Uh, the, the, uh, the confidence level that you want. Yeah, so it is, um, the confidence interval is the confidence level you want. If you set uh, at, at say 95%, where you're taking your fences at two and a half and 97 and a half, then um, versus say you want a 90% so you're setting it um, at, at uh, five and, and 95. So it's gonna get wider the, the larger your, your net. So the bigger your net, the bigger, uh, the wider the confidence interval. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, so if you, an, an additional holding that constant, so holding your confidence, uh, uh, your your confidence level um, the very the variability of the data i think will also affect it yeah the variability of the data and the larger the the sample size you're working with so the larger the sample yeah, size yeah good point so it actually get get um will decrease the the width um so those are the two factors right the the number of samples that you're working with and the confidence level you 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 are comfortable with Oh, and that was it. That was it. But there was something else I wanted to talk about. I think I left that to pull in the book up. But that was it because I left off with um, the conclusion. So, yeah, so then they go into the, um, the example, and then there's the conclusion where they talk about the um, theoretical approach. So, but these were the big ideas, right? So the big ideas are um, interpreting a confidence interval, understanding how the bootstrap um, 
process is an approximation of sampling distribution. I'm really drilling in the idea of what a point estimate is that we're estimating the population parameter, what the confidence interval is that it's um, the 95 um, percentile, the 95 percent of values from your bootstrap sampling distribution. That's like your confidence interval for um, where the population parameter lies. Um, so really those concepts, those are, and then the infer mental model where we're, um, we're uh, specifying a response, we're um, replicating it a certain number of times and we're calculating a stat and we're visualizing and then we're getting that um, interval, confidence interval from the, um, the function. So that mental model for the infer package and then those, those points, those bigger ideas really need to be drilled in because in the next chapter we go into hypothesis testing and, and really the meat of um, statistical inference. So yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, all right, I guess I'm gonna stop recording here. All right, well, thanks for that. That was great. Nice, man.